Hi everyone, this is Keith. Um, I've come across some data which I captured back on the 9th of May 2017. It was when Jupiter was at opposition. Um, I can't remember if I've actually processed this data or not. It's been sat on me hard drive since then I think. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to open the card of sale and show you what and where the details about where Jupiter was at the time of the capture. I tend to do all my imaging captures of Jupiter if and when the red spot is transiting. Um, so what I'll do, I'll right click on the actual object and we can see that uh, it was transiting at almost 11 o'clock on that date and it was only 31 degrees that was the altitude 31 degrees so if you bear that in mind when we get the actual image at the end right so I'm just going to close that down what I'll do I'll, I'll open up one of the AVI's and give you like a comparison of what the AVI capture is in relation to the graphic illustration represented in Carter Seal. So I'll open the red channel up and you can see indeed the red spot is more or less exactly in the right position which it should be. Carter Seal downloads the longitudinal drift of the red spot and keeps it up to date. What I'll do, I'll open the blue channel up and you can see it's more, the the, blur, the the great red spot is more prominent in the blue channel. There you can see. But if you notice over here on this side, over the southern equatorial belt, just below the southern equatorial belt on the, on the other side of the planet, you can see like a, a mark of some kind. We'll be finding out at the end of the process and we'll find out what that is. Um, it doesn't show up obviously on Carter Seal because this is just a graphic illustration what they emphasize in Carter, si Carter Seal is where the red spot should be that's that's what you need to go off that's the only that's the only thing that's really important but if you notice the scene it's not that good normally when I do an imaging session like this I'll delete the data. Um, probably is why I didn't get around to doing it. More often than not, I'll you know if it, if it's not up to the standard that I like, I'll just delete it. Um, I'm a firm believer, as you know, is you're only going to get out of it what goes in. Um, so let's shut that down. What I've done now is I've put it through a uh, software called PIP. It's a planetary, planetary imaging processing program. And basically what it does, so that the align and stacking is more accurate in auto stack it, the individu individual frames in that AVI dancing all over the place, if they were better aligned, then the alignment points would be more accurately placed. So what I've done is I've put it through PIP and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the comparison of the, what it looks like when it's through PIP and when it's through just the normal AVI. So let's go back to the normal AVI. There's our red channel. There's nothing wrong with the tracking. This is just simply because of the, the seeing conditions the planet bobbling all over the place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, the result after I've put it through PIP. Same channel. Then you can see marked improvement. There would be no surprise that once this has been through a line, st a line and stacked in order to stack it, the result would be much much more better than if it hadn't been put through PIP. So, 
let's just put them down and close that down a bit let's jump into wind your boss so we imaging we processing the the planet Jupiter so from our celestial body drop down list we've selected Jupiter then from the recording tab we're going to select image measurement in the image tab I want to select open image and I want to browse for our red stacked channel there it is there I'm going to double click on it and this round circular feature here what this does this this ensures that the the planet is both centralized and the orientation of the planet is correct as well with the red green and blue channels and what I did mention in the previous tutorial which I can't emphasize enough in fire capture and in sharp cap there's the option of saving your capture file so that the file is recognized in WinJuboss and the reason why that's being is it saves information which is vital for WinJuboss to carry out its functions these details are the date the time in UT universal time your geographical longitude and latitude and more importantly the start end the, sorry the start midpoint and end times of each of the channels that you're capturing and the reason why the midpoint is important is because that's where the central position is judged off the midpoint of each of the channels so getting back to our processing we've opened our red channel from the adjustment tab we're going to select from the drop down list the red channel as we go down the side we'll see outline frame select automatic detection and the alignment box is orientated around the planet and centralized it now what I'm going to do on the keyboard I'm going to select F2 and it's going to save the what's known as the image measurement settings file the IMS file it's going to save it in the channel of the AVI so the, in this particular instance it's the red channel so we click on save then we go back to the image tab open image and then we're going to browse for our green channel I'm going to double click on it go to the adjustment tab from the channel drop down list I'm going to select the green channel down to outline frame automatic detection and again I'm going to save F2 and it's going to save it in the green folder and finally go back to the image tab open image and then we're going to browse for the blue channel open it go to the adjustment tab from the drop down list select the blue outline frame automatic detection and again F2 on the keyboard save this part of window boss is no longer required so we can close it down what we're going to do now along the top row here we're going to select tools derotation of RGB frames and in sequence we're going to select our red green and blue channels so using this box here we're going to choose our image measurement file so using the red I'm going to put the red in and we're going to browse our green folder and insert the IMS file for the green channel and finally the um, IMS file for the blue channel I'm going to save it as a TIFF from the drop down list you have uh, various options but I'm going to save it as a TIFF file I recommend you save it as a TIFF and it's going to be saved the destination directory is going to be it's going to be saved in our folder where our actual AVIs and aligned and stacked 
images are. This box here is a represent representation of the planet and the central lines there's a red, green and blue channel and what that does, remember as when I mentioned the, about the central point, the midpoint of each capture, this is the midpoint of each capture so the red, green and blue channels they're combined into that midpoint to combine and create the colour image. So I'm going to click on compile and there's our result. Right, we can close that down, we don't need WinDuplus anymore. Now we're going to jump into Registax. There's our image that we've just created in WinDuplus. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to open a series of boxes, histograms, Colour mixing, resize image, and that's it. That's all I'm going to use. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to. That's it. That's the box I want. I don't want that one. I want that one. Right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure that the, the red, green and blue channels are aligned with each other. The, the colour doesn't look correct here. But if you, if, what I'm going to do, if, 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 that shows here because you can see that the red, green and blue channels aren't matched up. Simply by clicking on the auto balance button you get the colours aligned. So if you look, if you keep watching the planet when I click on the auto balance you'll see the, the colour change. There we go. Now if you look at the line, they're much much tighter together. We don't need that anymore so we can close it down. And I would recommend every time you use one of these boxes close it down because it can happen where you'll accidentally click on a, a process and you've got to start by scratch again. Right. What I'm going to do now, the histogram panel, I'm going to, you've got a, a slider on the right hand side here, I'm going to just left click and drag it over slightly and click stretch, brighten the image up a bit. Don't need that anymore, I'm going to close that down. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to play about with the wavelets. Now the wavelet settings, these are all the default settings. The wavelet scheme is set at linear. I've got the step increment set at zero, initial layer at one, and the wavelet filters that I'm using is the Gaussian. I always use the Gaussian. Get a I get a much better result using the Gaussian. And from the bottom slider, I'm going to work work my way up, taking these sliders around about three quarters of the way across. So with the bottom slider I'm going to drag it across. Now what I want you to do, just pay attention to the detail in the image and watch the detail start to appear. There's no right or wrongs in what you do with these sliders. It's everybody's taste and depending on how good the scene is, will depend on how much of the wave that you need to bring out. slightly increasing the wavelets. What I'm going to do now is increase the saturation a little touch. I'm going to click do all. Now remember the, the feature that we noticed in the original AVI just below the southern equatorial belt. That's it there. What that is, that's called Red Spot Junior. That's another storm.
that's about it really I, I don't think I would really want to do much more with the with the image other than what I've done um, just for aesthetics what you can do as well you've got what's known as flip and rotate if you wanted to you could flip the x-axis or the y-axis it's entirely up to you what you would want to do with the image or if you wanted to tilt the axis from these pre-selected preset figures you can tilt it so if you wanted to tilt it over to the left 345 degrees you can tilt it and click the wall and there you go now when you consider that the original AVI that we looked at the scene wasn't that good so I think this AVI has been on the verge of okay-ish um, but like I said there's not a lot more I would do with the image um, and that's about it really you can see now there's like festoons of detail coming out here some lovely detail and the, the structure here the red spot now the other notice, noticeable thing as well when Jupiter was at opposition at this time it was noted that the colour of the red spot had changed somewhat and it, which it does in this particular time it was noted that the colour had gone to like a from a reddy colour to an orangey sort of effect colour which you can see here but noticeable as well that uh, red spot junior it's like an orangey feature as well anyway that's it I hope you've enjoyed it if anybody has any questions or any other comments just uh, drop us a line bye for now